let's look back at Sunday. It finishes off week 12. There were five games on. Let's talk about everything that happened. The news, Draymond Green is back. Can we figure something out there? I don't know. We'll find out. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I'm very proud of how I look. Yes, I am high maintenance, but I think you got to be. And frankly, I enjoy it. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble on TikTok at redrock underscore beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com and use the code Locked On to get $20 off your order. That's J A S E medical.com. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. All right. What are you going to do? You're going to double bang it? You should. Listen to the audio, watch the video, give it a thumbs up, give it a subscribe. We're up in Operation 80K here for this season. Let's see if we can get there. And uh, you know how to do all the rest. Let's talk about what we need to talk about. Uh, actually, should we start off with a side note? Maybe we do. You've been seeing stuff, people talking about like the influencer accent. I, I, I don't think I talk in an influencer accent because I'm not doing like the, the subtle TikTok voiceover, but I definitely have a slightly different voice when I'm doing the show versus how I talk in real life. Because if I did the show with the way that I spoke in real life in a conversation, it'd just be probably something like this and I'd probably just keep my voice really quiet and you probably wouldn't hear a huge amount. Whereas when you're talking like this to you guys, I've got to like, I have to project, I have to actually really try and enunciate the words a little bit more and put a little bit more, you know, more passion, more energy, all that sort of stuff, more footwork. That's what it is, isn't it? That sort of stuff. But yeah, there is definitely, like, I, I get it. I get the influencer accent um, because you do have to sort of do things a little bit different when you're, um, when you're recording and when you're broadcasting. There you go. Just starting the show off with a side note. So let's talk about what we need to talk about here across Sunday's games. Only the five of them on. One of them was early. Big day tomorrow, though. 11 games on for the NBA Martin Luther King Day. Of course, early start. 1 p.m. Eastern is the first game. Um, so just be ready to set your lineups in a weekly lock league. Get bloody early. Get ready. Get really ready early because you've got to set it and otherwise you're cooked for the week if you don't get your lineups in 11 games on tomorrow. What do we know in Dallas? Luka Doncic and Derek Jones, uh, doubtful. So... There's going to be some obvious opportunities opening up. Derek Lively is questionable there as well. But with Doncic most likely not going to play, and these injuries have been a worry for him all season, or for me anyway, about him all season, um, you're going to get Tim Hardaway starting. And with no Exum, Exum's out. Jones likely out. Green is going to start. and He's going to have to do a lot more. So Josh Green becomes something interesting, I guess. Uh, Grant Williams also gets a little bit of a boost there too because he's going to have to start and he's going to have to play more minutes. Jaden Hardy, of course, will get lots of opportunities to get shots even if Hardaway is starting, which is the direction I expect they go. We wanted to get some news on Memphis and we did. Jaron Jackson and Santi Aldama are questionable, so it doesn't help us at all because I want to see what happens to the cashier when Tillman... Oh, sorry, not when Tillman. That is the cashier. When Jaron and Aldama are playing because it does limit some of his upside a little bit because at the moment, there's no centers. It's him. But if Jaron plays and Santi plays, then Jaron can play at center more. And then that can eliminate a little... And we know that Taylor Jenkins has hated Tillman all season. So there is that possibility. We need to say that. But what we did expect was Desmond Bain being out and Desmond Bain is out. The other key thing from that Grizzlies game is what happens with uh, Gigi Jackson? Because without Bain, like Jaron's not a shot creator. Aldama's not either. Will they use Gigi or will they just not play him? I hope they bloody just let him loose, play him 25 minutes and see what happens. Be very interesting to see. In that same game, Draymond Green's coming back. Um, I have no idea what's really going to happen with that rotation. If I've got Kaminga, if I've got Jackson Davis, if I've got Pajemski, even if I've got Sharich, I'll probably just hold and see what happens. Now, I don't think Draymond's 100% a must roster points league guy. For category leagues, I think he probably is, but I also think he's going to come back off the bench and play like 23, 24 minutes. I don't think he's going to play 29 straight away. So I think it's just going to be very messy. I think what will, will end up happening is Kaminga will be a 12-team category drop. 
Um, I think Pajemski will be a 12-team category league drop. I think Jackson Davis might hold, but out of the Jackson Davis, Sharich, Looney combo, are we dream on this? Something has to give. Are they going to DMP Wiggins? They probably should, but they won't. So I, that's I think what will happen is Jackson Davis, because he can hold in 20 minutes, but I think Kaminga will lose. I think... Or well, maybe he doesn't. Maybe they want to give Kaminga 30 a night, but they haven't. They haven't even been giving him 30 a night anyway. So look, that is really tough to figure out who's going to miss out there. Does Sharic, she's been starting and playing 26 minutes a night. Does he still do that? I don't know. I would probably just hold and see if we get any sort of pattern from that game that makes sense as we move forward. But it's a huge part of what's happening on Monday, and we really do need to pay attention to it to see how the return of Draymond Green impacts so many different things in that rotation up and down the lineup, even though there's still no Moses Moody or Chris Paul um, that's going to be available there. All right, that is the news. The, we covered all the other news on the uh, preview show, which you can go check out uh, earlier on. Let's go through some of the games. Let's start off with game number one. What a beautiful place to start. We look at the Denver Nuggets, who gets the, um, the comfortable victory there over the Indiana Pacers, 117-109, the final score. You'll look at this and go, ugh, Tyrese Halliburton, what happened? 19 minutes. And the question is, I don't really know why he played so few minutes. His shooting was poor, obviously. 22% is really bad. But he was still like a, a plus eight. Nempard was a minus 16. McConnell was just a better player than Andrew Nempard. And I don't really know why Rick Carlisle loves Andrew Nempard so much. I just don't see it with him at all. To me, Nempard is like the definition of mid. He's like... Like, fine. Like, is he an okay defender? Like, sure. Can he shoot? Like, not really, but sort of a little bit. Is he a good passer? Like, also not really. Is he a great scorer? Also not really. Like, I don't know what he is. I know he's a second-year player, but it's 24, 25. I just, I don't get it. I don't get the fascination. Now, I've, if I've got TJ, I'm definitely holding. 5-2-5 five, and five on a bad night. It's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. Nempard was pretty good. 12-2-7, and seven, but again, the negatives were negative. Negative 16, no steals, no blocks. He is a 12-team worthy player. And the other thing I don't know is what's going on with Miles Turner. Two games in a row of only 25 minutes. He had 12-4 and four with two steals and a block, but is it fair to say, it's not, but is it also fair to say that Isaiah Jackson outperformed him in the last two games? Like that, well, actually, that's 100% true. Did Carlisle think that that was the case? Because Jackson played 20 minutes. He had 12 and 7 with two steals. That's on the back of his four steal, four block game last time out. That is a 12-team league player. I don't think that we have to add Isaiah Jackson, but streaming-wise, sure. Bruce Brown's had two big games and one bad one in the middle there. Uh, 18, 10, 6, three steals. And what I've noticed in two of those games, he's had six assists. So he's taking on a little bit of the playmaking responsibilities while Buddy Heald started, but it was because Aaron Neesmith was out. Heald had 16 points with two steals. I still don't think that Heald has to be a must, but this team continues to be confusing. Like Ben Matherin, for example, only 22 minutes with 12 points. That's not a category league player. For points, it's totally okay. But even saying that, for the season, he's under 23 fantasy points per game, which is not a must roster guy. But he will have, you know, if you might play 30 minutes in the next one. It's all over the place. Sticks was terrible. Eight points in 25 minutes. So I don't think you need to roster him. Obi Toppin, he's hitting everything. 11 points with three threes. He's okay to stream, but I don't think that Toppin or Matherin or Jalen Smith are 12 team league players. They can be rostered, but they don't have to. Jackson pushes his way in to be a little bit of a stream guy. I would still hold McConnell, and I think Nempard is a back-end player, but their rotation's a little bit confusing for sure. For the Nuggets, we talked about last week maybe that Michael Ponder was struggling, and then he comes out and drops a 25-8-5, seven threes, one steal, two blocks. He's 73rd over the last two weeks. Last two games have been fantastic. We are back on track. Jokic missed two shots for the game, one free throw and one field goal. He had 25-12-9, two steals and a block on 92% shooting. Yes, and 50% from the line. Like what? And Contavious Caldwell Pope did his thing. He had two steals. He had two threes. He had 11 points. His minutes are relatively consistent. He gets steals. We know this. That's sort of where his value is, though. It doesn't do anything else. 11, 2, and 1. But you know what you get? You get some steals, and he is relatively consistent there, and you get some threes. The headmaster struggled from the line, 2 of 4 for Jamal Murray, but 61% shooting overall, 25, 1 and 8, and Aaron Gordon dropped in 20 and 10. But honestly, there's just not a lot to talk about here. DeAndre Jordan got ejected, Justin Holiday's back out of the rotation, and Christian Brown did absolutely nothing. And that's, that's the game. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical and the Jace Case. According to the FDA, 
Pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right now, right across the country in your winter, when a lot of these respiratory tract infections really can start to ramp up. And having access to antibiotics for whatever infection it is that we're talking about, skin infections, respiratory tract infections, uh, urinary tract sinusitis, whatever it is, having access to antibiotics that aren't going to be impacted by the supply chain is key. Well, you want to be in a situation where your family knows that if something does crop up and become serious, that you've got what you need there to treat it. And that's where the Jace case comes in. It provides five potentially life-saving antibiotics that can help treat a long list of bacterial infections, and you've got them there on hand for your peace of mind. You go to jacemedical.com complete a physician encounter, it gets reviewed by a board certified physician, your medications get dispensed by a licensed pharmacist, and you get them at a fraction of the cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com, use the offer code locked on for $20 off your order. So that'll bring us on to the second game of the day. And there is there, there are things to talk about, but bloody this Hornets team, man. Um, the Heat win at 104.87. The final score, the mellow ball shot 10% in the first half. Cool. He ended up with 21 and 10 with five assists and three steals. I think that's eight steals in the two games that he's returned. He didn't take a free throw in this one, though. I and mean, we had a million in the last game, and he shot 38%. We know what Lamella Ball is. He's, he's, he's a good player. The two game playoff week's annoying, but he's good. And yeah, it's, it's fine. Two Rogier, good, good game. 24, 5, and 7. Low efficiency, but overall still pretty strong. And Bridges had 20 and 7 with 1, 3, and 38 minutes. Continues to play pretty well. The rest of this team, yuck. Mark Williams still remains out. Maybe he's back this week. Who knows? Uh, Gordon Haywood's still out. Brandon Miller is out. They said he's day today, but like I am doubtful that Steve Clifford's information could be trusted there. We're not rostering Brandon Miller in 12 teams, I don't think. I don't think you need to do it. They started Cody Martin, who had three points in 23 minutes. He did chip in with two blocks. He's a defensive stats streamer, but that's really about it. And that's more for deeper leagues. While Big Dick Nick didn't do anything, he was bad. Two and eight in 27 minutes. I do maintain that Richard should be a 12-team rosterable player, but I also understand that if he doesn't bring what you need, that there's no point. Right? That's that's how this stuff really should work. Um. Yeah, I don't. There's a lot else really going on here with the Hornets. 16 minutes for Nick Smith with four points. Like. Cool. Nate Mensah got the backup minutes. Oh, yeah, that's all. Yeah, PJ Washington returned and was bad again. Five and six. I you, I don't think you need to hold on to PJ. Get that garbage out of here! Like, he has been pretty rough for most of the season. They're, no matter who's out, they're keeping it 28 minutes a night. They prioritize Miles Bridges over him very clearly, even though I don't think Bridges is going to be on this team next season. I don't know what they're trying to do. It's not leading to any wins, is it? So I'm not re- they just, yeah, I don't know what they're doing. And I don't think they know what they're doing, which is probably more concerning. For the Heat, there was no Jim Butler. There was no Kevin Love. They've both traveled with the team to Brooklyn for tomorrow's game. So the expectation is that Love will play. And the expectation was always that Jimmy was going to play in one of these two games. So, you know, by extension, if he didn't play Sunday, he'll probably play on Monday. And then they, of course, when we got a chance, maybe we'll see the rotation. Of course, Jaime Huckers got injured in this game and he won't play in the game on Monday. He hurt his groin. He was cooking 15 and 5 in 15 minutes on 64% shooting. I said something earlier today talking about the impact of rookies in one of my shows, talking about how Pajemski and Jackson Davis were in the top five of the, all the impact stats in terms of rookies. So what is your list, man? Why is Huckers not on it? I didn't make the list. Huckers isn't on the list because his advanced stats aren't as good as what you think they might be. He's like, like ninth in rookie uh, EPM. I think he's sixth in LeBron. And he was like uh, 12th in Darko for rookies or whatever it is. Even though he's played a ton of minutes and he's looked good for the eye test and his counting stats are pretty good. All of his impact stuff is not that good. That's not me making that up. That was I wasn't like telling you these are my top rookies for the day. These are what the advanced stats had told us in terms of impact of players. Who was up, was up the top? And it was Chet, it was Lively, it was Wemby. Obviously, Chet Wemby won two, then Lively. Then it was Pajemski, Jackson Davis, and Reith as the next group with Case and Wallace after that. Um, that was what that list was. Anyway, Huckers was cooking in this one. 15 and 5, 64%. And now he's hurt and he didn't play the second half and he won't play again tomorrow. A groin issue, I would guess he's going to miss a couple here. Um, I, I don't know. I just wanted to see what would happen when the team was healthy. And now I won't. Again, bloody hell. The Spur Dunkey Robinson, 30 minutes, 19, 4, and 5 with three threes. With Huckers out, he's going to take some of those minutes on the bench unit. Okay, let's go. Adebayo, 24, 10, and 7, while Hero had 21, 7, and 4. 
Um, Highsmith started the second half with Harkers out. He had seven and two, but two steals and a block. What uh, Highsmith can be is a streamer in deeper leagues for defensive stats, but you've got to factor in that Butler's 30-ish minutes will be there, and then Kevin Love's 17 or 18 will be there in the next game. And the same goes with Little Chungus. Nikola Jovic had five points in on 33% shooting, but he had seven rebounds. He had two blocks. His block numbers have been much better this season. He started the last couple. His minutes have been fine. He's nothing outside of a 20-team league guy. He's like uh, 203rd over the last two weeks in 23 minutes a night. But the absence there of Highsmith maybe does mean that he starts. But Caleb Martin is back. Highsmith is there. There's a bunch of different options there to play instead of Jovic. And in the end, I just don't think we want to deal with that in a 12-team format. Kyle Lowry can also be jacked, I think. Get that garbage out of here! Scoreless in 26 minutes. When you're looking for assists at the end of a week, maybe you try and stream him in. He gave you three today. Is that good? Not really. But there weren't that many other options. You just don't need to be holding him. The guys you hold are Adebayo, Hero, Butler. We're holding Huckers for now. I don't know what that means later on. Martin becomes a peripheral guy. Lowry's a peripheral guy. Robinson's probably worth a look at the moment. And then that's it. And we still haven't had any idea of what this team is going to be with a healthy roster, which I'm sure annoys Heat fans. It annoys us too. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The NFL playoffs are here, and there is still plenty of time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Even if you put $5 on the Dallas Cowboys to win the Super Bowl, you've obviously burnt that $5, but you've got your $150 in bonus bets because it does not matter if that bet wins or if it loses. You just get $150 in bonus bets for new customers who put a $5 bet on. Really easy stuff. The app is so easy to use. There are so many different ways to bet. Like you can do live same game parlays. You could have gone into that game and parlayed Dak Prescott interceptions and Jordan Love touchdowns and see what happened with that. You can go to the Parlay Hub and check out that. Maybe you parlayed the Dolphins in the AFC Championship game and the Cowboys in the NFC Championship game. You would have lost, but you could still get your $150 in bonus bets back. The best way to find popular plays, of course, is in the Parlay Hub. And they've got just, this is jam-packed. Absolutely jam-packed to the roof. With parlays, nothing else. It's only parlays as far as the eye can see. So go in, join in the Parlay Hub, go to the Explore tab, see more parlays, just overfilled, the brim. It's rolling out the edge with parlays over at Fangio. So go to fangio.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. Fangio is an official partner of the NFL and don't forget to gamble responsibly. So now that'll bring us into the next one, which is, of course, an overtime game between your Sacramento Kings and your Milwaukee Bucks. Maybe it's mine, maybe it's yours, I don't know. But the Bucks win it by one point in the end, 143-142. Keegan Murray left this game early. Keegan is one of the... He's one of the... And I know you won't believe... He's just so inconsistent. Yesterday or the day before, I praised him saying, man, I love what he's doing, adding in these little extra bits and pieces to his game. And then he has four points on 22% with one rebound in 20 minutes. There's just so many of those games from him. He's just wildly inconsistent. Like he might have two good ones and a bad one, which is, it's good. That's trending better. But now he does this and then he gets hurt and he's got a hip issue. Oh, it's, yeah. Well, don't drop him. Of course, he's a must roster player, but the up and down frustrations of this guy, I think, I think at some point the... All, all I, I don't know, it makes me feel like I hate it, but all you ever hear is how great Keegan Murray is, but there is a lot of inconsistency still that he needs to work through, which is fine. He's a second-year player. That happens. So bonus is really the opposite at the moment. There's no inconsistency. He just drops triple-doubles every game. In fact, he had, a, he had the rare combination of a triple-double, triple-one with one missed shot for the game. Yeah, you don't get that very often. 21, 13, and 15, one three, one steal, one block, 90% shooting, try to be Jokic, and then hit both of his free throws. What an unbelievable game. Sabonis, so I said the other day, I think he's been somewhat disappointing this season. Most people seem to have disagreed, but are they short-term memory? Because at the moment, he's cooking, right? He's the third-ranked player over the last two weeks. I would say that, and that, that brings me to 20th on the season, but of course, without that number three ranked overall two-week period, he was like 30th or 35th. And that's not where people were looking to draft him. But he's flying at the moment. So now you'd say things are going really well. He's ninth in points season. It's going really well. He's dominating. 45 minutes. Fox, this is this is good. 32, 2, and 5, 3 steals, solid percentage, 46, 86 from the line. We love all of that. And then Fanta Pants. Uh, am I doing No, I'm not doing this again. Fanta Pants. No. No. It's like Michael Scott seeing Toby. 39 minutes, 26 and 10, 6 triples, 3 assists, 1 steal, 71%. I refuse to do it. 
A, huge minutes. B, big shooting. And C, it's Kevin Herter. If you want to try and stream someone in for points, of th- oh, actually, let, let me rephrase. The Kings, excellent schedule. So I take all that back against you, my ginger-headed legend. Don't, don't take offense. Yes, go and add Kevin Herter because you can stream him Tuesday, Thursday. And there's only two teams that play Tuesday, Thursday. It's the Kings and the Thunder. But then after Thursday, the Kings don't play again. So piss him off after that. And tomorrow with 11 games on, you probably don't have a streaming spot available anyway. So yeah, that's great, Kevin. Love that you're rounding into form at the perfect time of the year. Well done. Enjoy it. Let's just hope you do it for these next two games, yeah? Worth looking at. With Murray out, we got 32 minutes of Barnsley. 14, 1 and 1. I think my voice is a little bit gone. Maybe, should I try it? The pencil, Harrison Barnes. Barnsley! Yeah, it's not really there, is it? Um, he was all right. Streamable for the, the Tuesday, Thursday. Well, Malik Monk, 36 minutes, 28, 7 and 7. Now, I wish he wasn't 6 of 10 from the line, but the other stuff's cooking. He's been awesome. He is a very, very clear must roster player in every format, every league. There's no debate about this, I don't think. Um, we got six minutes out of Sasha Vazenkov with Murray out. I don't think he's going to be getting those too often, while Trey Lyles is the one that started. And again, if Murray is out Tuesday, Thursday, Lyles is going to get more minutes. You get two games for the price of one ad, nine, seven, two, three threes. Maybe. Maybe that's worth a look. There are no other players that aren't Kings or Thunder that you get that little two-game boost from, and that is important. For the Bucks, Leaky Beasley. Hope you had him for the three-game in Fortnite end of the week. 23, 4, and 5 with five triples. Talking about inconsistent, this man has been this. He had a red-hot streak. I think he's still shooting 47% from three for the season, which is clearly insane. But he had a stage where his minutes were down like 21, 22. And now they're back up. But remember this. Their best two performers in this game, amazingly, were Beasley and Bob Porter, who had 22 and 10 and 82%. But they play one game in the next five days, and it's on Wednesday when there are 10 games on. Is it worth holding on to Leaky Beasley, where you might not play him on Wednesday, when you could try to get two games out of Fanta Pants? I don't think it is worth holding him. I've seen what he's done all season. He's had a nice little stretch here, Beasley, but it's inconsistent. And the same with Portis. If you want to disagree with that, that is totally reasonable. You can hold, but understand that it is going to put a real wrench into your schedule for this week. Only two games. One of them is Wednesday. One of them is Saturday. Not good. Yanni had 27, 10, and 10. He was shit from the line, but 56 from the field is good. And Lopez, better game from Lopez, 17 and 9, three threes and three steals. And also a good game from Damian Lillard. I hope some of the panics about Lillard have calmed a little bit. 29, 4 and 8, five threes. The 39% is still bad, and that should improve. I'm pretty confident that's going to improve. But six of six from the line, really good numbers overall. 33 minutes for Pat Connaughton, the king of the let's do the least with the most, five points there. Well, they started Andre Jackson with Chris Middleton out. They didn't even bother going to the limited minutes for Middleton. They just sat him down. So Jackson started. He had five fouls in 10 minutes. The Bucks fans and reporters have been raving about what this guy does, the little things. Of course, he's got absolutely no value whatsoever in fantasy, but five five minutes, 10 fouls, that's, uh, that's Thon McCare-esque. Let's go on to the next game. It is the Clippers and the Wolves. The Wolves with a huge victory. I believe this is the only time that Paul George and Kawhi have played in Minnesota together on this team. Of course, they haven't played together in any other team. Wolves win 109-105. Kawhi, 26-9-4, two steals. He's, a, he's amazing. Um, Jim Harden, 14-1-8 with Richie Benno. Two threes, two steals, and two blocks. Paul George, maybe not so good. 16 points on 26% shooting with four threes. And of course, after I talked about him on the Waiver Wire show, so why are people adding him? Why are people using him? Why are people holding him? Russell Westbrook played 29 minutes completely out of nowhere. Now, let me rephrase out of nowhere. What I think happened here, I'll just talk about Westbrook first. 12, 8, and 12 with two steals is a fantastic performance. 38% is not good, but 4 or 5 from the line. That is undoubtedly a 12-team performance. There is no question whatsoever that's a 12-team line. But what I think happened here is that they announced late in the day, Zubats is questionable with a calf issue. Okay. Then they announced their starting lineup. Oh, lo and behold, Zubats was starting. Okay, cool. And then, about 10 minutes after that, they put out another lineup, which I... Did I... Yeah, no, you know what? I did break the news. I broke the news that they had uh, ruled Zubats out and put Daniel Tyson as the starter. And the thing here is, and part of the reason why the Westbrook big minute lineups don't work is that you can't really have Zubats not being a shooter and Westbrook not being a shooter on the court together. That's the problem. Well, it's one of the problems. It doesn't work. But without Zubats out there playing big minutes to Daniel Tice, who got 22 minutes, you can do it. You can get away with it. And that bumped Westbrook's minutes up. Now, the expectation here is, is that Zubats does not play on Tuesday. They've got a, they've, they've got a um, two-game week as well. So I wouldn't be rushing to add Westbrook. But 
with three games on Tuesday, with Zubats likely not there, I can see Westbrook having his minutes bumped back up again and actually being worthwhile on Tuesday. And that is contrary to everything I've said. I've been telling you to drop him for five weeks, six weeks, and that has been entirely accurate. But now, if Zubats is out, I think Westbrook's actually a pretty good option for Tuesday because that makes more sense to me that they can play him more. Now, they might not, but I think they, I think they can. Storm and Norman had 24 points with six threes. We know what he is. He's a, like a points guy. The two blocks is interesting, and he shot 75%. While Terrence Mann did uh, nothing, two points in 19 minutes. I would say that uh, Clippers fans, like just from a real perspective, like how have you found Terrence Mann's season? I think it's been pretty bad for the majority, but he continues to start, but he also helps do what those other guys need to do in the starting group, which is, again, that's that's useful too. We got uh, 16 minutes from the Cockroach, Mason Plumlee here as well. For the Wolves. Ant Edwards, 33, 9, and 6. Huge from the free throw, huge from the field. We love that performance all the way around. Just great numbers everywhere. While Jaden McDaniels, for, oh man, this guy can finally put some numbers up, huh? 14, 4, and 4 with two steals on 60%. I'm not trusting it. Totally okay to roster because the role is there, but I still don't think he's a must at all. Um, and then Townsy had 17, 6, and 5. Not surprising to see lower usage in a game that Edwards is there. Gobert returned from his injury, had 15 and 18 with four blocks, 37 from the uh, 37 minutes and 80% from the field. The free throws were killer, but I thought he played a really good game, especially defensively here. And Conley had six, two, and five. And what we saw is that with big minutes to Towns, big minutes to Gobert, they said, I'm sorry, Nasreed, but you just can't play. This is an important game and you're only playing 14 minutes. That's very interesting, I think. Eight minutes, or 14 points, eight, try again. 14 minutes, eight points for Reed with two steals. He, to me, is a fringe 12-team league player. I would prefer him over Kyle Anderson, who played 27 minutes here and had 10-1-3, and three, but it is really intriguing that they went to Anderson in this game over the Wizard of Noz instead. Now, as I'm recording this, you, you might know the way that I record these shows. I record little bits and pieces through the day as each, as each game finishes so I can get it out as quick as possible. Now, right now, news has just broken that Desmond Bain has a grade 3 ankle sprain and we reevaluate in six weeks. That is that is season over for him. I, that, there's almost no way, uh, especially fantasy season over. Six weeks is the middle of March. Um, what date are we at now? The four, 14th of January. That's like 14th of March is six weeks. That's a reevaluation. If it's all good, he comes back maybe towards the end of March and there's two weeks left in the season. That's it for him. Um, yeah, so that's not good. So what this does mean though is that the risk of Jaron Jackson being done is or later on is pretty high. Um, Canard, Williams, must roster, Gilead, close enough. They're going to have to make some moves though at some point. Like there's just, they don't have any play. They're going to get beaten by 70 every game. Um, And then the next part of that is what does this mean for GG Jackson? I've mentioned a lot of times about the um, shot creation lack on this team and GG being the only guy who can do it. GG is still now the only guy who can do it. I have no problem adding GG Jackson just to see what happens. Look, they might come out tomorrow and Santi and Jaron plays and GG gets 10 minutes and isn't worth it. Or they could just lean into playing him 26, 27 minutes a night and saying, let's see what you can do. I would rather be ahead of it, I think, here. That's bad. It's terrible news on Bain. That's season over, obviously, for most of us here. Uh, for yeah, Basically, season over. I yeah, Canard, Williams, Tillman, clear 12s. 10s. Gilead, 14 to 12. And I've got no... Jackson's got a way higher ceiling, GG Jackson, way higher ceiling than what Gilead does. I'd consider adding him. But that's just brutal news, man. And Jake Laravia's out three weeks as well. It also probably helps a little bit of David Roddy, but he's got a horrible permanent fantasy game. So that's like I'd be a little bit less interested in doing that. The big swing now is what happens with Jaron. Because if Jaron is there, it does he becomes the number one. That's not going to be great for him in terms of efficiency, but... It takes some minutes away from a Jackson, but Bain being out kills this team. There's no one to handle the ball. There's no one to dribble. There's no one to create apart from GG Jackson. A lot is going to ride on Luke Kennard and Gilead here and Derek Rose, amazingly, when he comes back, but is he going to get his third week-to-week hamstring injury? Maybe. They are in real strife, like massive strife. But I would look... Yeah, Vince, yes. Tillman, yes. Kennard, yes. Lucky I featured both Kennard and Tillman on the two shows earlier today on the thumbnails. But we are we are going GG now. I think I think we got to do it. I think you got to get ahead, get out ahead of it, and let's see what happens. Yeah. All right. As Obi joins me for the Grizzlies discussion even further, the thing with GG right is that like I think you're going to get hurt with quite a few percentages. I think he's going to be quite bad at assists, but he's going to have volume. But the problem here is, is that last game GG played 27 minutes, right? But in that game there was no Jaron, 
and there was no Santiel Dharma, which is conservative estimate 50 minutes. So those 50 minutes need to come from somewhere. Do they come from the 20 minutes that John Conchar got? Maybe. Look, that, that's possible. What about the 20 minutes that Zaire Williams got? The 35 minutes that David Roddy got? Will it come from 36 of Vince Williams? Probably not. 33 of Luke Kennard? Probably not. 36 of Xavier Tillman? Probably not. Um, like, where, where do where do they come from to keep... Like, the 50 minutes need to come from somewhere to keep GG at 27. And I think that if you're adding GG, you will probably be disappointed in the short term. But what will end up happening almost definitely now is that Jaron's not going to play much here rest of the season, is my guess. All right, he's already yeah, popping up with this knee contusion. He's had many lower body injuries over the course of his career. They're obviously going nowhere. I think that what this means is that, like, if Jaron and Santi both played, GG's not hitting 27. It's almost impossible to do. And they're going to have to sign somebody because they have no guards. The other thing there is is that if Derek Rose plays, like, what what do those minutes look like? Does he play at all? Does he come in and get minutes over Gilead? I don't know. I, I do believe they need GG's shot creation, but are they going to take Roddy out of the rotation? Zaire out of the rotation? Concha? You need 50 minutes there with Jaron and Santi returning. So the 240 game, I'm, I've been playing it. It's bloody hard. I don't know how to get the minutes. Unless Jaron is just cooked. If Jaron's done, then Gigi's going to get 30 minutes here in March. Well, February, March, you'll get 30 minutes. I feel good about that. But Jaron's not done yet. So I think if you go to add Gigi, it's going to be small initially. Like, like for example, if I've got Jaron and Santi playing tomorrow, I've got Gigi at 14 minutes. And that's Conchar at 11, Zaire at 15, Eldama at 20, Roddy at 24 only. Like, I, I, that's the best that I could do to try and get the minutes correct. It's like it's Williams 32, Canard 32, Tillman 31, Jaron 31. That's going easy on Vince and Canard and on Tillman. There's just not enough there. It was Everything was great for GG yesterday, but it had those guys out. It had no Jaron. It had no Santi. That's 50, maybe 55 to 60 minutes that could come back in here. And there's no clear guaranteed guy that is going to lose out so GG can play. So while I say get out ahead of it, it might be rough, but I do think it will pay off eventually. Just be aware that there's bad percentages. There's a, despite all the injuries, there is still a crowd towards minutes and your preference should be Vince. It should be Canard. It should be Tillman with Gilead behind those guys, I think. Hmm, what a bloody annoying situation. All right, let's do the final game of the day. The Suns up against a Blazers team that had like nobody. And I thought it would be a huge... Look, the Blazers have been getting pumped on the road every game. And then they were there. They had eight players available. And I thought the Suns would get the win. They did. I thought they win by 60. They won by 11. 127, 116, the Suns win. Um, Bowl was out of this game for Phoenix, if that matters for any of you. Let's talk about Devin Booker, who played 39 minutes. Had to play 39 in a game like this. 34, 6, and 7, 64%. And this is what's crazy about this game, right? Is that Devin Booker shot 64%. Grayson Allen, 67 Bradley Beal, 69, giggity. Yusuf Nurkic, 63%. They shot 61% as a team and still only just beat the Blazers by 11 points. And the Blazers shot 45% as a team. There was more free throw attempts from the Suns. That's like... I know I know that they still won and it's comfortable. All that stuff is true. But man, that is like... That's pretty wild. They had to shoot that well to get a nine-point victory against a team playing nobody. Grayson Allen remains a 12-team league player, 20-4 and four with four threes and two blocks. Brad Beal, looking much better. If you don't trust his health, I get it. But he's strung together a nice couple run uh, of games here where maybe if you wanted to sell, you could. He's top 50 over the last two weeks. Bealo is 23-4-5 and five with two steals. Nurkic had 14-13. and 13. Well, Durant was just like, a little bit mid. 21-5-6, and six, 38 minutes. A lot of minutes again. Um, but sort of took a back seat here. Eric Gordon didn't do anything. He's really just a stream guy at this point. Three points for him in 24 minutes. And we had Metu getting the backup minutes instead of Drew Eubanks. Eubanks sort of pushed his way back in, but has fallen back out. Onto the Blazers. I'll tell you who was out. DeAndre Ayton and his sore knee. Shaden Sharp with his groin. Malcolm Brogdon with a groin. Matisse Thibel with an illness. Robert Williams obviously out. Moses Brown obviously out. Baji out with a knee issue. Jeremy Grant out with an illness as well. So they had eight players. Eight players. They started Simons, Scoot, Kamara, Jabari Walker, and Dwap Reith. Remember that. Remember a lot of these names. 
Scoot played 40 minutes. He had 33, 7, and 9 with three steals and four threes, which is an unbelievably good line. Now, he took 31 shots, which is Cam Thomas went, bro, pull up. Like, what are you doing? Maybe pass to your teammates. But he still had nine assists. They just needed him to do a lot. He shouldered a load with 41% usage, and they were all right. The problem here with Scoot is that he could have 8, 2, and 5 in the next game and shoot 21% and kill both your percentages at the same time. But that's really good. Like That game now takes him to 259th over the last two weeks. And these guys aren't going to be out consistently, but like we say, with all rookie guards, it gets better and better and better as the season goes on. And when we get February and March, you probably will be having a top 100 run. Just can you deal with it? I don't know the answer to that question, whether you can or not, but the higher up the standings are, the more of a priority Scoot is for your roster. Simons has been pretty poor the last couple, but 41 minutes, 28, 5 and 5 with 6 threes. We love that. Dwop Reith started. 17 and 6, 39 minutes, two steals and a block. But of course, if Aiton plays the next game, Reith won't have that value. And the same with Jabari Walker, who had 11 and 8 in 29 minutes. Not fantastic. I do think he'll have some March value, Walker. But, you know, we stream him while there's a scenario here. But then this is a game we got 37 minutes out of Chris Murray. They went with Chris Murray over Jabari Walker. Murray had 13 and 3. Well, 13 3 assists, three steals, three threes. Easily his best game. I haven't really seen much to get excited about with Murray, but that was a pretty good game. But. All I look at here is go, oh, that's good from Scoot. Oh, that's good from Reith. But how long does this maintain for one game? I don't even know. Scoot's going to have a role. We're, we're clear on that. But is Reith? Is Walker? What happens when Grant, Aiton, Sharp, Brogdon, Thibel all roll back in? 10 rotation players. I, I do think most of these guys won't be playing end of March. Best two months away. A lot of interesting stuff. Scoot's good, but... Well, Scoot was good. Will he continue to be good enough to justify him as a must roster player? That's the big question, and I'm not really convinced the answer is yes, unfortunately. Go and do it, though. But remember, you don't get this game added onto his totals. Let's look at um, let's look at the lines of the night. Let's get straight into that, because we don't, um, don't have... What's his name? Uh, what are they called? Stream of the day to recap. No, let's do the monstrous line of the night. That's where we're at. Um, not many options here. Well, actually, not true. There were two options, and both of them were big white European centers. We are going to go with the big white European center that um, had better free throws, and that is Demontis Sabonis, who had 21, 13, and 15 with 90% shooting and hit both of his free throws. Fantastic performance. The waiver wire line of the night goes to a man on the same team as that big white European center. It is old mate, friend of the show, fan of pants, Kevin Herter who had 26 and 10, shot 71%, hit six threes. I don't like him long-term, but add him. Tuesday, Thursday, great schedule. Stream him in. Let's see what happens. I don't think you're going to be very surprised to find out who the young gun of the night is, despite the rough shooting percentages. It is, of course, Sterling Henderson, who had 33, 7 and 9, had steals, but shot you know 31 times for 33%, which could honestly have lost you the week with that field goal percentage. That is entirely possible. And the dud of the night. It wasn't many. Like the, the worst performances were guys like TJ McConnell, who's not rostered everywhere and didn't meet my cutoff. He was not very good at all today. The dud of the night is, in the end, Mike Conley, who had six points, two rebounds, five assists. Not a terrible game, but not great. And he garners himself the dud of the night. Let's look at the top six players across Sunday's action in the NBA and see what we need to uh, look at there. The number one was Sabonis, of course, followed by Anthony Edwards, Nikola Jokic, Michael Ponder Jr., Fan of Pants, Kevin Herter, and Devin Booker. Your top six players rostered in under 50% of leagues. Herter at number one. Leaky Beasley next. Probably can drop because of the schedule. Norman Powell, stream him in for Tuesday when they've only got three games on. Dunk Robinson with Huckers out, a little bit of value there. Jaden McDaniels, I don't really know what to do with it. I don't think he's a must roster, but we can always do it when he's a starter. And Dwop Reith, um, as long as Aiton is out, you can stream him in, understanding that there's a little bit of fluctuation in the production. The top six players for Yahoo Points Leagues today, Sabonis at one, followed by Scoot, Yanni, Jokic, Anthony Edwards, and Devin Booker. Let's Before we go and check in on the results from Industry Pickup today, Let's just have a quick look at some takeaways. I do think that adding Duncan Robinson's worth a go with Huckers out. I think Kevin Hurd is worth an add because of the schedule. I've got the Duck Luke Kennard there. I could throw Vince Williams in there. I could throw Xavier Tillman in there. We spoke about the Grizzlies a lot. I like Kennard as an add. I'd be okay to drop Bain if you've got a full injured reserve slot. I, I just don't think we're going to see him again. I, I don't know, but I think he might be cooked. And I'd be okay dropping Brandon Miller as well. Injured at the moment. Production's not there. Ball is back. I just don't really see it for him as a must roster player. So we'll go in now and let's have a look at the results across my leagues. 
All right, let's start with uh, industry pickup. Okay, so I was up against Mitch Casey this week. This is back to the start of the schedule. So I took on Mitch in week one and I beat him and I took him on again and I beat him. 6-3. Good to get back on the winner's list there against Mitch. Mitch was really close, as you can see on the side. I beat him by two blocks. I beat him by three turnovers. Um, our field goal percentage was 55 versus 54, so it was relatively close. Mitch had the, was getting pretty close to me in the end. Then he was like, I'm going to bench Bradley Beal so I can save turnovers. But in the end, it didn't matter because the guys that he had all playing generated enough turnovers to lose that category. And I do sneak through with a win, 6-3. So I don't, if you played Beal, I don't think it would have mattered. I don't think he would have caught me in blocks. Beal didn't have three blocks, did he? I don't think that would have mattered. So we would have been all right in that one. So that's my industry pickup win. The other wins or the other results, Dan Titus, he's on a roll, man. Titus is flying. 7-2 against Barutha. Um, Noel Rubin beat Rep Bauer 5-4. Kingy beat Raclean 5-4. Um, Drew Dinkmeyer finally lost. He had a uh, he mis misevaluated how the schedule was looking in terms of uh, he thought that Mike had more games to play and he didn't. Mike wins at 5-4. Uh, finally, Drew loses. Can I, that means I, I overtake him, go back to the top. Yes, let's go. And Mike Barner beat B Dub 5-4. So overall, pretty pretty close um, results there. Let's have a look at those standings. That's the wrong league. I want to go back into this league industry pickup. There I am on top. Um, why does it give me that one? I don't want that one. Guys, any way? You, there, okay, that's the right league. There we go. There's me ahead now. Two games ahead of Drew, followed by Rhett in third, Mitch in fourth, Mike Catron five, Mike Barner six, Noel Rubin seven, B Dub eight, Kingy nine, Rickleen ten, Dan Titus eleven, and Alex Barutha down the bottom. All right, let, let's have a look at the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl nine category league. How did I go in this one? Hmm, 7-2 win over New Team 38 and 7-2 win over 8 No Jokic. I like that. First week of the playoffs for the FBI World Cup. Did I make it through? I don't think so. Ah, 5-4 loss. That's annoying. All right. Well, I'm out of that. Bad luck to me. And in the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl points, did I have a win or two wins because we've got two matchups there? How did I go there? Big win over Luke at me. I'm the captain now. That's good because he was like top, he's the top team and over the biggest bird as well. So big victories for me across the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Points League. Let's check the standings. In that one, I'm in the Jason Kidd division. Luke at me is leading the whole uh, part, part of this. So I'm up to fourth now. All right. That, so oh, yes, he copped his, only his second loss for me. W for me. Let's have a look in the category league. I'm in the main red claws division there. I think I'm third in that one. If it ever comes up. Second? No, there we go. I'm behind Rap. 21 games behind, of course, but I'm second in that one, so flying along all right there. And industry pickup, we've already shown the, the standings over there. Maybe I'll bring up the uh, the Yahoo League that I'm in as well. All right, so unfortunately, Ed Monix got the best of me there. He got me 5-4. I was fourth prior to today, so Spider's not going to jump ahead of me. Ed's not going to jump ahead of me. Um, Who's fifth? Scott Howard's Beavers is not going to drop, jump ahead of me. So I'm going to stay in fourth, I think. Yeah, I'm going to stay in fourth in that league. So I'm pretty happy with how that all played out. So that's our little weekly league wrap-up there. Don't forget to jump in here and be, of course, a double banger. If that, that industry pickup logo is a bit too long, isn't it? Uh, that's fine. Um, be a double banger. Hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Like, you know, all that stuff to do. Listen on audio. Listen on video. It's great when you do that. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.